Thanks. They did so many great things. The one bad thing? <laughs> that uniform? Is 80s. <laughs> we liked shoulder pads in the 80s. That's not even shoulder pads, it's like a it's like a shoulder umbrella. Did you know that finding an RV park in Arizona in the winter can be challenging? Well, it is. We were heading to Catalina, Arizona for a few days and struggling to find a place to stay. After an exhaustive online search, we finally found an affordable place and according to the website, it looked like we'd gotten very lucky. And then we pulled in. I'm not really sure what happened. We looked at a lot of reviews, we went online, This was not what we were told the RV park was going to be. It's not even what some of the pictures were. And we looked at different ones, supposedly. I... <laughs> we did get a spot close to the freeway. So that's good. We can make a quick, quick escape if we need to. We're, we're going to let it go for a while. We're not going to try to judge a book too early. $30 a night. And most of the places around here were look we would have been like 45 50 dollars a night so we will see how it goes at the wishing well but we'll get you a picture of the wishing well it's it's about yay tall it's small we'll see maybe maybe if we think positively it'll be good bottom line we got a place to stay we have water we have electricity so that's good it's a good start It turned out to be much better than we initially thought, and it was close to the reason we came to Catalina, Arizona. Corbin, where are we going today? Ooh, slug my yellow. Uh -huh. Where are we going today? Bios the Biosphere. The Biosphere 2. Science. That's what today is about. We, we tried to watch Biodome last night, and... It's awful. <laughs> I told him, I'm like, it only got 4%. 4% out of 100 is bad. Was it That's Rotten Tomatoes? Movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, as a kid, I, I enjoyed it, I guess. I never watched it. <laughs> but now that I'm mature, uh, I don't find it entertaining. I probably would have just watched it by myself. But seeing their faces like this <laughs> told me I just need to turn it off. So I turn it off. That too. But anyway, uh, so we're going to head up and we're going to check out the biosphere and go through all the different the two kids. what are we ecosystems habitats habitats all right the two kids in that movie when they're watching a tv show they eat each other's toes <laughs> biosphere 2 is located in oracle arizona and is one of the boldest science experiments man has ever undertaken the goals of biosphere 2 were to build a mini biosphere and study sustainability, life support systems for long-term space missions, and to better understand Biosphere 1, Earth. It took seven years and $150 million to plan and build the biosphere, with construction being completed in 1991. It included seven different biomes, a 27,000 square foot agricultural system, living spaces, labs, and workshops. There were two missions completed here. The first included eight scientists and lasted two years. Yes, they were enclosed in the biosphere for two years. The second mission was to last 10 months, but ended in September 1994 after only five months. The Biosphere 2 is now a laboratory for controlled scientific studies, provides public education, and serves as a center for learning about Earth. 
All public access was suspended in March due to the pandemic, but they began offering self-driving auto tours on 7 August. Luckily, we visited in January and we were able to spend a day taking tours and exploring this amazing facility. The first tour we took is the History Tour, which is $8 per person. We recommend this tour before taking any of the other ones because it gives you a background on the facility and the missions that took place. And yes, even kids will enjoy the tour. <laughs> he's got the headphones on and he's dancing. It's like he's in the 80s. The idea of the project was to build a structure that could be taken to space. Now, not the ideal structure that we have now, but to study Earth's systems in a completely enclosed system where they could grow their own food, manufacture their own oxygen, uh, recycle water and waste without the help of planet Earth. And the idea was to study Earth systems to see how they self-organize and if it would even be possible to live on another planet. The history tour takes you around the outside of the facility and provides a background on construction. And then it takes you to the massive 3.14 acre building covered in 6,500 panes of glass. The second part of the tour takes you inside the biosphere and you learn all about the scientists, how they lived, and what they went through to be a part of this experiment. Uh, and they were chosen based on their ability to be in isolation and to manage systems, okay? Because remember, they were part of the Synergy Ranch from New Mexico. They've been trained either on a sheep farm for a year in Australia where they live off the land, um, and they'd also been out on a boat in the ocean for months at a time where they could all learn to get along with each other. That didn't always happen. Um, but they had the qualifications to be in a small group and be isolated. Now, they had communication with the outside world, they had radios. Um, they had TV and telephone, old-fashioned corded telephone, you know. Um, but they uh, but they were able to follow the directions of the scientific advisory committee and the management team on the outside. And so that's why they were chosen. So someone took care of the atmosphere, someone took care of the ocean. She was actually a marine biologist. They had someone who, uh, the doctor, they had someone who took care of the uh, domestic animals, and that was a woman. She did all the slaughtering. They had um, agriculture expert, um, someone who took care of the rainforest. So they all had their responsibilities, but first and foremost, they had to stay alive. And so working in the agriculture biome uh, took most of their day, but they did spend about 16 hour days, uh, six days a week. They tried to take Sundays off, but there was no one to come in and repair something or handle it if it needed to be taken care of. They did so many great things. The one bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> that uniform? Is 80s. <laughs> we liked shoulder pads in the 80s. That's not even shoulder pads, it's like a it's like a shoulder umbrella. We took a few minutes before our next tour to look at the facilities the scientists utilized when they lived here. and also visited the Farming Mars display, which shows how lessons here are helping support a manned mission to Mars. The Under the Glass tour is included with general admission. It takes about 75 minutes and includes 150 stairs and a mile walk. The first part of the tour takes you through different biomes. Unfortunately, we couldn't enter the rainforest due to an experiment taking place at the time. The ocean biome is the next stop, and the 700,000 gallon ocean complete with coral reef, which is undergoing an eight year study on the impacts of the environment on coral. Next to that is the marsh and mangrove area. On the opposite side is the savanna, complete with aquaponics display showing guests how the process works. 
The final above ground stop on the tour is in the desert. After that, you head to the underground portion of the tour. Biosphere 2 is a technological achievement, and nearly all of the machinery to make it possible is housed down here. The biosphere was an enclosed system, but they needed a way to control the air pressure changes caused by the heating and cooling of the facility. The planners developed a system of two lungs that would stabilize pressure throughout the building. They're no longer needed since the biosphere is now an open system. These massive lungs are impressive and show you just how much thought went into making the biosphere a reality. The final portion of the tour takes you through the tunnels and up to what used to be the Argo Forestry Biome and is now the Landscape Evolution Observatory. Scientists are using this observatory to learn how climate change can impact ecosystems. Our tour ended and we headed outdoors to explore more of the area. When we were inside that lung that when they opened up the door and air came in, it moved down. That is actually one of the two lungs that we were inside. How much were those lungs? Huh? No, I said how much. I can't remember how much they said they cost. Oh, I don't know. I'm not very good with this memorizing stuff. The whole thing cost $150 million. How much? The $150 million for the whole thing. So without going on one of the tours, you can still kind of look at a few of the, the areas, but you can't actually get inside. So, I mean, if you're going to make the trek out here, take the I tour. Take the tour. You learn so much more information than you can find just from reading about it because these people have been studying and researching and they have all this knowledge. Yeah. We ended our day by learning more about the ocean and coral reef study taking place. This area is a fantastic way to see what's actually happening under the ocean. They're currently in the early phases of the study and the water is very dirty as it undergoes bioremediation. Basically, they're cleaning it up so they can start the five to eight year long experiment. Seeing the mutt gave us a glimpse into one of the mysteries of RV living too. I think many of us want to know, when you look at RV and trailers, what does the black tank look like? And I think we figured it out. Touring this historic facility was awesome, and we hope they're able to open their doors again soon so others can explore it. So prices to get into the biosphere, $21 for adults, just general admission, and $14 for kids. They do a military discount. I think they do seniors as well. And then each of the tours that they have, and they've got a few different ones, are $8 a person. It's a flat fee. There's no discounts on that. So for us today to do the, the history tour and then the under the glass tour, well, the Under the Glass tour is included in your admission price, so that wasn't extra. Okay. The history tour was an additional $24 for us. Okay. So $76 total for us. That's with a military discount. Um, and we ended up spending almost three and a half hours just there. May I tell YouTube joke? Stand by. Yes, you may tell your YouTube joke, but you have to speak up loud enough so that they can actually hear you. What do you call when you trip, what do you call it when you trip over a tic-tac? I don't know. Tic-tac-toe. Nice. Join us over the next two weeks as we explore an ICBM facility, the Pima Air and Space Museum, the Kitt Peak National Observatory, Saguaro National Park, and more. Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.